Hi, I'm Vikram, our long-time tennis player and a coach. We will get our set of online tennis lessons for plan to Beginners, intermediate players, lock players, blah, blah, blah. Right from grips, stands, stroke play. Put in the like putting it. Thanks. Hey, how's it going? In the key now, we'll come keep the forehand and backhand volleys. For any player, volleys are really important. Forehand ground strokes, backhand ground strokes, serves, all are the good. Effective volleys, you will become a complete player. The good thing with volleys, in an pathing na, it's not complex. A lot of varieties kathnu na usiyalle. Different kinds of grips kathnu na usiyalle. Few simple steps of volleys kathna, and if you keep on practicing that, you can start hitting like pros. We'll see those now. So when do we play volleys? Usually, for a short ball, I uh, approach to the net volleys a lot of go. Or when you are playing doubles, your partner serves, you are on the volley, up a volley sort of when go. Or when you have done a nice serve, and your opponent or return weaker arcing you can approach the volley and finish. So I think now volley is different you saw. So volley the first thing is what grip. In the grip volley, you will first pack. Both for forehand and backhand volley, the best grip is the continental grip. Continental grip Continental grip is having your back side of the index knuckle on bevel number two. So this is easily used without changing for forehand and backhand volleys. Similarly, left-handers, same thing, bevel number two la back side of the index knuckle. But you hold panna, that's your continental grip. Or shaking hand with the racket, that's the continental grip. And the grip which the wall is for both forehand and backhand easy all along. This will help you to quickly play on both sides without changing the grip. Western, semi-western portion now, wall is lot of the custom. That's one point. Another thing is you have to keep changing. You don't have enough time to change grip. Ground strokes a lot of ball travel but the time you can change your grip into a backhand or whatever grip you're using. But volleys you play it closer to the net. So travel time from the opponent is very short. You cannot be changing grip at that point. Continental grip. It's easier to quickly play forehand or backhand volleys with continental grip. The second thing is the setup for the volley. So with your grip, always stand with your racket head above your wrist level. Drop on ammo or racket to one side. Ademari lama, always be prepared. Your stance slightly wider than your shoulder so that you're balanced. Because you're closer to the net, ball will travel much faster to you. Reaction time will come here. So you should be always half prepared. That's why you're standing like that in the volley. Always try to make an L shape. And the L shape is almost 45 degrees. So this is 90 degrees, almost 45 degrees, center of that angle. And the level of the arcano, both for forehand and backhand. And we are playing the continental grip, right? So there is no need for change of grip. The setup is using your left hand or the non-dominant hand for your, for the left handers. The right hand is the non-dominant hand. Right handers, left hand, the non-dominant hand. Other than setup is very important. We'll use that and get the racket in position. You'll not change anything else. That's why I said earlier, volleys are much simpler. Racket update push pani ready position and the swing doesn't go beyond your shoulder level. Compact swing. This is a nice compact swing. You can make a racket pin at the point. You know, volleys the ball quick. You'll start meeting the ball later. 
If you start meeting the ball later, you not have control. So meet the ball in front, which is somewhere here. For that, you keep your swing compact. Back it head up, set up, compact swing, this is enough. And the compact swing mandrappa, all of the shoulder vandruko, all of podo. You don't have to go much beyond. Ground strokes are prepared under Mary, shoulder across, other kind of time. So the compact swing, the shoulder will not work across the world, all of the back end, you turn, and then you don't go much beyond that. Setting up, use your non dominant hand, swing, but it doesn't go beyond, and then shoulder turn is enough this way. You don't have to go too much across, you don't have to take the racket back too much. This compact swing is enough. Wall is a straight tower, shoulder vegetable a lama, I didn't know question to go. Tapping like that. Yes, I'm not saying it's wrong. In a wall, when the faster balls were up, you don't have the time to react, to set up, turn your shoulder and do everything proper. So fast balls were up, sometimes you can just start blocking asses. But when you cleanly approach for a volley, the best way to do it is with your shoulder turn, setup is good with your left arm. That brings your shoulder around. That means you're already in a sideways position. This is a nice setup. Same with the backhand. You can keep your non-dominant hand in the racket until you start your swing. Okay, that's the setup. Step three is hitting. So from this setup position, you'll use the same compact swing and hit the volley. How are you going to hit? We'll not tap the ball. Volley sundit from above to below tap on the both in backhand and forehand. We're going to create a slight diagonal motion. So from the setup position, the racket head is above your wrist. And the setup position in the you'll go slightly diagonally downwards. Racket head la racket will be faced this is the top edge. So this is your bottom edge. Then your forehand or back end bottom edge should lead the stroke. What does it mean? You create a light slice. You create a light slice and lead with the bottom edge. You finish by having your bottom edge leading the stroke diagonally. So you don't hit straight, you don't hit top to bottom. What you're doing is creating that nice diagonal motion and in that process, you're underspin create a ball. So that the ball, when it bounces there, it doesn't lift up for your opponent to come and kill it, right? Slight underspin. So ball or height or a conj height lend the arm pinga and you go diagonally forward with your bottom edge of your head always leading forward in the position of the arco. So Few balls based on the height, Padre Pinga, I stayed straight. So I don't natural on one The beginner volley, try to just go slightly diagonal. Okay? Similar to forehand, now on the backhand conqueror. So what I'm gonna do is go for a long diagonal. Shorter cut for I'm going to step in, start a bit higher than the ball side and create that long diagonal. Let's see in the back end now. And producing power in volley should be with your body weight. Compact swing in Karnala will not have that amount of power in your arm. So what you do is put your body weight forward and create that forward motion. But to create that motion, you have to step in when you're hitting. You step in and hit. Split step, 
set up, step in. That's your volley. Back end side, split step, set up, step in. So that creates the power. Abre minute, the addition of power or other control because right. So that's why you're going forward and creating the power. For aggressive volleys, you can go a bit more forward with your body, like like that. So approach wall is slightly easier. We can create a lot of power when you're moving like that. Hit and come up, you split step, and then create that forward motion with that full body motion forward. Now for follow through. Follow through Pandrapa, nothing changes from the way you hit the ball. I told you about the bottom edge leading the stroke, right? So set up, meeting the ball with your bottom edge leading. Follow through in volleys is not big, it stays compact. Every compact swing, go, follow through and compact. But the bottom edge leading the stroke stays as is. It just stays in that position. Set up, finish, and that's your follow through. You don't have to go beyond that. Back end follow through is similar. So bottom edge should lead the stroke. The, the follow through doesn't have to go beyond this. If you want to, you can drop the racket a bit more, but you don't have to go completely like that. So simple setup, finish, and the follow through can just stay compact also. Like the swing, a compact follow through. And in gaining a ball meet pending, finish and coming through will get the body weight transferred. And then you prepare for the next one. That's enough. So remember, three steps. First one is the continental grip. Second one is the setup with that L shape in your racket. Racket head always above your wrist. And the third step is hitting with diagonal and stepping through. Both in the forehand and backhand, the similar thing. Racket above the wrist always. Setup, compact swing and finish.